Now, again, a flux, just having a flux or just having a magnetic field over an area is not what's important here. What you need is a change in the magnetic flux in order to produce one of these uh, curly electric fields. And we saw that last time when we were doing the uh, little demo with the, uh, the bar magnet with the other coil. If the magnetic field was changing, we got the galvanometer to deflect. If it wasn't, if it was a constant magnetic field, constant in time, then there was no current induced. So let's look at a, an example uh, similar to what we did last time, let's, and what we were just doing earlier. Let's have a, uh, a coil of wire. And let's give some numbers here. We have the coil has 500 turns of wire in it. And uh, the radius of the coil is little r, and let's say little r is uh, 3 centimeters, so 0.03 meters. And we have a bar magnet, north pole, south pole, and so we get a magnetic field pointing, at least pointing into the coil, that would be initial. And let's say B initial is 2 Tesla. Now, we're assuming, we're making the approximation that this magnetic field is uniform over that whole surface. It's not going to be. We know that a, a dipole field, you get off axis, it's going to have some uh, components that are not parallel to the axis. But let's just assume that everywhere in this coil, due to this bar magnet, no matter what part point in the surface we measure, the magnetic field is approximately 2 Tesla in the uh, negative Z direction. Okay, so again, this is plus Z and minus Z. Okay. And we can calculate the flux. So we can say that the initially the magnetic flux is going to be what? What's the magnitude of the magnetic flux going to be? How do we figure this out? Say again. 2 pi r times b. What's 2 pi r? 2 pi r is the circumference. We don't want the circumference. We want the area. We want the area, right? So it's going to be not 2 pi r times b, but pi r squared times b. So we get b dot n hat times that area. n hat, if this b is per perpendicular to the surface, then b and n hat are in the same direction. And so it's going to be just b times that area or b times pi r squared. Now, uh, we got to be, again, a little careful because our n hat could be pointing this way or this way. But I'm just worried about the magnitude for right now. So let me just call this the magnitude of the flux to take that sign out of the picture here. So we know it's going to be that magnitude. We can calculate this as 2 Tesla times pi times 0.03 squared. And that gives you what? 2 Tesla times pi times 0.03 meters squared is what? 0.00565. And the units are Tesla meters squared. Okay. Everybody agree? 